Hey everybody, welcome back to Live Free and Tool On. I have been getting a lot of questions lately if the new Craftsman V20, that's a 20 volt line, is actually worth it and if it's quality tools. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go through a full series. I'm going to review each tool individually. I'm going to try and make this as brief as possible so you can see the performance of them so you can get out there and get these tools really quick if you decide to. So without further ado, this is the seven and a quarter inch brushless uh, 20 volt circular saw. Here's the specifications. Now I bought this tool as a bare tool only. I had to buy a battery separate. What I will say, if you buy a battery for this, go ahead and get yourself a four amp hour battery. The reason why is because this consumes power larger than other, you know, I would say tools like a drill driver or an impact driver or a light. You really need to get the power in as much as possible on this guy as possible as much as you can. So <clears throat> without further ado, let's talk about the tool. Let's zoom in just a little bit and you can see what we're working with here. Okay, so looking at the upper shroud, this is metal. It's really nice. It's nice to not have plastic. You do have a chute that comes off and you do have the availability to put the chute adapter onto this. You can hook it up to a vacuum. The lower part of the guard right here, this is plastic. Um, now something that's pretty surprising for me because this is you know not one of the top tier brands is that the base which is the fence at the bottom this is actually forged so it's not pressed steel which means it is a lot more sturdy than what a pressed steel would be on the back side of it you do have your adjustment so let's go ahead and pull this off to the side so you can see it goes down through all right, let's see what the max depth of this actually is. So I'm gonna get a tape measure and we're just gonna measure it out. Two and a quarter inches on a 90 degree angle. It's really hard to see if you can see that. So it's two and a quarter inches. And if we cut this to a 45, let's see what the depth is there. This does have adjustments on the front and it goes all the way to, ah, okay, it goes all the way to 56 inches on the adjustment on the fence. So let's go ahead and do it to 50 and see what our depth is and then we'll do it at a 45 as well. And when I say depth, we're not gonna go, we're gonna go vertical here. So this is right at an inch and a quarter at 56 degrees. That's how deep it will go. Now let's go ahead and look at 45. It's got indentions too, that's really nice. All right, so this is at 45, so kinda locks it into place. Let's see what the depth is here. This is one and a half inches on the, actually it's just over one and a half inches on the depth for the 45. So we'll get this back to a 90. Uh, I'm going to adjust this because we're going to do a, a rip here. Let's raise it up. Okay, I want to be just below the wood itself so it's locked into place. Now the rubber over molding feels good. The handle here is hard plastic but it does feel good as well. Um, you know everything on it seems pretty solid. It does have an allen wrench in the back so you can remove the blade. Now check this out. Watch this. It's actually magnetic inside of it so it's not friction so you don't have to fight with it getting it in and out. And uh, so it's right there, that's convenient. All right, let's do a quick rip cut and then we'll do a cross cut so you can see what we're cutting. This is a one by six pressure treated, so I'm hoping that's gonna give us a good uh, visual and to show you what kind of power that this actually puts out with a four amp hour battery. And this does have a typical 24 tooth um, rip blade on it. So this is a framing blade and this is what came with the saw.
Okay, so you saw the rip cut. I actually did two cuts, and then I did a cross cut. Um, the first rip cut that I did, I took it easy just to kind of feel my way through this. It cut it like butter. Second rip cut, I actually pushed it really hard to see what this could produce and what could it actually do, and it did really well. It cut through this material uh, like it, it really didn't have too much issue. You could hear it bogged down just a little bit, but I would expect any saw to do that. So would I say that this is worth it? Absolutely. I think this is a super quality tool, and I think for the price you're not going to beat it on the market today, this is the best value for your dollar. So if you're uh, right on the precipice of a decision, I would choose this every single day. So thanks everybody. Tune in more for more quick reviews on these tools. I'm hoping to get these out so people can go out and test the tools out and really you know, take advantage of these low prices while you still can. If you like this content and it helped you, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. That does help the channel. And we'll see you in the next video.